Kristen Wagner and I'll be going over lymph node mapping and the role of sonography. Okay, so first we're going to go over a few definitions. Lymph nodes are secondary lymphoid organs, peripheral lymphoid organs located in the course of lymphatic vessels. They filter the lymph during its passage from the tissues to the thoracic duct and initiate immune reactions. They are also known as lymph glands and nodes lymphaticus. Lymph is a clear yellowish fluid found in intercellular spaces and in the lymphatic vessels. Lymph contains mostly water, 90, about 95%, plasma proteins, and lymphocytes. And sentinel nodes are the first few lymph nodes into which a tumor drains. There are several lymph node locations throughout the body um, and about a few hundred lymph nodes within the body. Okay, I'm going to briefly go over the anatomy of the lymph node. There is an outer fibrous capsule with indentations called trabecula, an outer cortex and inner medulla. Lymph passes through the afferent lymphatic vessels, which have valves to prevent backflow and into the lymph node. The cortex contains mainly T lymphocytes, the germinal center contains B lymphocytes, and the medulla contains macrophages. Fluid exits through the efferent lymphatic vessels through the hilum, and the hilum also contains the vein and artery of the lymph node. If you would like to know more about lymph node anatomy and physiology, here is a really nice entertaining video with more information. Equipment and settings. Minimally, you need a 7.5 MHz transducer. Having a transducer of greater than 10 MHz will give you better resolution, but sometimes you need to use a 5 MHz transducer for assessment of deeper lymph nodes. A standoff gel block can be used for large superficial lesions, but you may need to use a lower frequency transducer. Sonographic appearance of lymph nodes. Here are basic guidelines for assessing benign versus malignant nodes. However, keep in mind, just because it appears to be benign, only a biopsy can tell. Benign nodes tend to be less than one centimeter, malignant greater than one centimeter. Benign oval kidney bean shape and malignant round. Benign tend to have a long axis to short axis ratio of greater than two and malignant less than two. Echogenic hyalis is present and in malignant, absent, or eccentric. Benign hypoechoic rim is present and homogeneous, and malignant is absent or eccentric widening. Benign have absent punctuate hyperechoic foci, and malignant it is present. In benign, cystic areas are absent, and malignant are present. In benign, vascularity is central and sparse, and malignant is peripheral and irregular. Here is a sonographic image of a reactive lymph node. The lymph node is filled with lymph, and this patient might be fighting off an infection. It is difficult to find non-reactive lymph nodes sonographically. This is a longitudinal grayscale ultrasound of an elliptical hypoechoic reactive lymph node with echogenic hyalus arrows. Note the continuity of the hyalus with the adjacent fat arrowheads. We need to use either color or power Doppler to show vascularity. These are low flow blood vessels going into the lymph nodes, so we need to have high sensitivity for Doppler. First try color Doppler, then if you're not seeing any blood flow, then try power Doppler. So we've tried color Doppler and we need a more sensitive way of detecting these low flow blood vessels. So we try power Doppler and the settings that we need for detecting small vessels are low wall filter, a pulse repetition frequency of about 700 Hertz, uh, initial color gain is increased to show color noise and then gradually decrease to the level where the noise just disappears. Here is a link to a cine loop of a normal lymph node with color Doppler. 
Here is a sonographic image of an abnormal lymph node. Transverse grayscale ultrasound shows a round metastatic lymph node from a primary head and neck squamous cell carcinoma. Note the intranodal cystic necrosis which appears as an echolucent area within the lymph node shown in arrows. Don't take for granted that if it looks benign, it is, because sometimes that is not the case. Um, here's a case of a lymph node with metastatic involvement. B-mode ultrasound image demonstrates a lymph node that appears benign on the basis of its reniform shape and echogenicity. Dot in line indicates a lesion diameter of 20.4 millimeters. Corresponding ultrasound elastogram, however, shows a stiff area that turned out to be a metastatic focus, um, shown in the arrows. Dotted line indicates a lesion diameter of 24 millimeters. So you found a suspicious looking lymph node. Now what do we do? We have to have a system of accurately noting where the lymph node is um, in order for the surgeon to know for sure that this is the one that we want to biopsy. Here is an image of cervical lymph node mapping. We have lymph node chains throughout the neck area, and we need a way to accurately um, pinpoint the areas for those nodes which we find suspicious. You may see a worksheet like this one in the clinical setting. You would mark which side of the neck and which number section that you found suspicious lesions. These sections are bordered by anatomical landmarks like the hyoid bone, sternocleidomastoid muscle, common carotid artery, etc. Here is a great video by Dr. Nayana Patel who explains the cervical lymph node mapping in detail. I do apologize, there is a section of audio interference, but you can still understand what she is saying. Um, you can also focus between 4016 and 4716 of the video. Here are two diagrams you should be familiar with. When annotating a lymph node lesion in the breast, you would mark it as you would any other lesion of the breast. Most lymph nodes will be located in the region of the tail of Spence or the axillary region. ALND and SLNB. ALND stands for Auxiliary Lymph Node Dissection. SLNB stands for Sentinel Lymph Node Biopsy. ALND removes all of the lymph nodes in level 1 and 2 axilla, whereas SLNB removes the first auxiliary lymph node or nodes to which the breast drains. SLNB, where blue dye is injected into the breast parenchyma intraoperatively and the surgeon removes any blue appearing nodes. In cases of early breast cancer, the surgeon may decide on SLNB, which has lower complication rates, and better quality of life. When patients have had lymph nodes removed, areas of the body may accumulate lymph fluid, especially the extremities, and cause swelling. Many of these patients wear compression sleeves or stockings to slow the lymphedema. Remember to take care and be accurate. Mapping can sometimes be time-consuming and tedious, but remember how important it is to be accurate. Here is an example of how important our role is in diagnostic imaging. This is the story of Ruth Ahrens of Austin. On a morning in January 2006, Ruth Ahrens of Austin stepped out of the shower and began drying her hair. Upon lifting her arm, she noticed a dimple she hadn't seen before. A quick internet check made her suspicious of breast cancer and a doctor confirmed it. Within a week, Ahrens had her first surgery. My initial reaction was more shock, Aaron said. You never think anything is going to happen to you. We're all infallible, you know. It wasn't a fear. I was just shocked it happened to me. After a second surgery to remove the lymph nodes and a series of radiation and chemotherapy treatments, she is, as of today, free of cancer. Aaron said her family, friends, and co-workers helped her pull through at a time in her life when she was just numb. The whole time... Through, it was kind of almost like an out-of-body experience, said Aarons. Nearly 14 years ago, Aarons' father died of melanoma, a skin cancer caused by sun exposure. But on, other than that, cancer was not a part of her family history. It was just so out of the blue, Aarons said. 
About seven months prior to my diagnosis, I had a mammogram, and by January, the cancer had progressed to two centimeters stage three cancer. That's how fast it happened. Her malignancy was rapid and could have ended in tragedy if not treated quickly. Thank you for listening, and I hope you've learned something.